Life Audio. All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Sparkle Speak. I'm your host, Catherine. And today we have on a very special guest. Her name is Michelle, and she shares her story of how she came to know the Lord in high school and how that eventually shaped the faith of her family members, specifically her parents. And I think you're really going to enjoy this, especially if you have been praying for friends or loved ones. Um, and you just, you know, maybe you're getting weary. Maybe you don't know how much longer you can or should pray. <laughs> um, so I think you're really going to enjoy this. After a few words from our sponsors, please enjoy hearing from Michelle. Um, so yeah, why don't you kick us off with sharing a little bit about how you first started identifying yourself as a Christian? Like, what did that look like for you? Well, that was a long time ago now, <laughs> um, but I was raised in a family that um, kind of professed Catholicism, but uh, didn't really practice. Um, so uh, they sent me to catechism and all of that. So I did the whole um, first communion and um, confirmation and all of that kind of thing. And so, but, you know, I had no family support with that, but I was interested for some reason um, without anyone, you know, helping me along. I was still very interested in all things to do with God. So he must have, um, you know, kind of had his hand upon me early on. And um, so I went along, I did that. But then when I was about um, freshman year of high school, I met a family that went to a full gospel church and studied the Bible and did, you know, worship music and um, other worship activities and, and such. So since my family wasn't religious at all, they didn't really care if I followed the Catholic way or not. So it wasn't too big of a problem to kind of, you know, move on to something else. So I started going to church with them freshman year of high school, and I just loved it. <laughs> so I kept uh, going and studying the Bible, and I had a couple of older women in my life who were very influential, um, great mentors spiritually, and um, just always prayed with me and led me to the Lord. And so I just started um, professing Christianity then and not just a religion but you know a personal relationship and um, I would say I you know I may have strayed a little bit you know during college or something but I always kept the you know belief and the faith and everything going all the way into adulthood um, with a few years here and there that I didn't really participate in uh, studying or going to church and, you know, all of that. But, um, but once I came back, once I had a family and, all, um, you know, I, I continue to study the Bible and, yeah, try yeah. To, you know, live it out. It was still <laughs> it important was still to you. Awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. And how did your parents react? Like when you kind of started getting super involved with, I, I guess, Christianity. I, I don't know if that's different than Catholicism, but how did they react? Yeah, we would say we were Christians, you know, all mm -hmm. along, although my mom especially didn't practice. My dad was raised Catholic. And so he, um, he actively left the church. You know, he just, I don't know if he had a bad experience. He never shared, you know, if there was one thing that made him leave, but he left the faith and was not just like a non-believer, but he was a, you know, I would say a God hater, you know, he just hated all things um, religious or anything. Um, so it's not like he cared that I left the Catholic church, but he um, was a little bit suspicious that maybe I was, you know, joining a cult or something, or I was, you know, in the land of being a, a Jesus freak or something like that. And then my mom kind of helped that along because she didn't really care for it. And so she thought, 
the biggest deal was that I left the Catholic Church, you know. Um, but uh, later she came on board and, you know, was was fine with it. But I would say the first high school years um, when none of my family, I have a brother and a sister, too. So none of my family practiced any kind of faith. Um, they they thought I was a little weird. <laughs> you know, yeah. I was like, <laughs> about Jesus freak and yeah but that's really like brave of you to (laughs) say you know and not that you didn't care but you were just kind of like well I see Mm -hmm. the benefits of the Lord and how his relationship is very real to me and so Mm -hmm. regardless of what my family thinks I'm going to continue to do this so that's really cool yeah I guess I was I mean I never thought of it as brave but I guess I was kind of a um, bold person, <laughs> you know, growing yeah. up, I just was like, whatever, I don't care what, what you think I'm, you know, and I really did believe it. I really did see the truth. And so I didn't care. What yeah, they, that's amazing. You know. <laughs> so how, like, just as your life has kind of unfolded, has there been a particular season or event or time in your life where your faith was really deepened or changed in a way? Yeah. Um, well, I, I would say, you know, it's been a good um, growth and good progress from being a, you know, 13, 14 year old to adulthood. Um, but, you know, one event that always sticks out in my mind that just solidifies things is, that my dad did end up converting. (laughs) He did end up becoming a believer. And it was so hard to believe that that could happen. And I didn't even have hope that it would happen. Um, You know, all my life growing up, I did pray for him. And, you know, I didn't want him to die suddenly because I knew he was a God hater, you know. Not just kind of one of those people who kind of knows it's all true and maybe would believe it, you know, if it came down to it. He was not even close to that. He was just angry about, you know, don't talk to me about that. And and he was fine with me. He was very nice to me about it. But it was like, that's your thing. I want nothing to do with it. Um, and then he had a um, medical emergency where his appendix ruptured and he, um, the poison, you know, went all through his body and he went septic and he was in a coma for um, several weeks. And uh, when he woke up, he described that uh, he saw, uh, you know, kind of God chasing him and he knew that he was not ready to die and he was just struggling to get out of that so that he could embrace the Lord. And that was just so much more than what I could have ever imagined when I prayed all the time that I prayed that he wouldn't die suddenly and he would have a chance that we would be able to talk and maybe he might, um, become born again or, you know, something like a deathbed conversion. But it was beyond that. It was a major conversion turnaround. And he lived for a couple of months after that, totally 100% changed. And talking about it all the time and just you know, it just amazed me and it amazed, amazed everybody, you know, to think that my dad could, you know, really change that much, you know? Wow. I mean, right. that's, those are those types of stories where you look at it and you're like, only God, like exactly, it, yes. there is no other explanation other than this was real and this yes. happened. Yes. <laughs> wow. I, know, I don't know if you've ever heard of Greg Boyd, but, um, Greg Boyd wrote a few books and everything. And one time he spoke at our church and he said this phrase and it stuck in my mind, but he said, our lives should raise questions for which only Jesus is the answer. Mm. And I just apply it to that always because there's no other answer from that happening. It was beyond what I could have orchestrated myself and, uh, you know, beyond my dream of, 
his conversion. So yeah, yeah. well, I think that's such a cool story, and I'm glad you shared because I think um, a lot of us, myself included, have people that I'm praying for, and that mm-hmm. I, you know, I would never um, expect everybody to have the faith that I have or believe mm-hmm. the things I have, and um, I. I love people in my life that don't believe in that's mm-hmm. not going to change. Mm-hmm. I'm always going to love right. them, but I, but I still want them to know. I wish they knew what mm-hmm. I know to be true of Jesus and God. And um, so I guess like what advice would you have for people who are in that position where they're still waiting on a loved one to um, have, mm-hmm. you know, a change of heart or, or see God for who he is. I know you had mentioned you were praying, but what did that kind of look like for you? And do you have mm-hmm. any advice for someone who might be in that boat right now? Well, actually, my prayers have changed since then. I was, you know, a young girl, and now I'm I'm an old lady. You know, <laughs> but I I think you know I continued to pray, and I would say I had faith that God would you know rescue him, um, but I didn't really pray with the authority that I would um, encourage people to use now. You know. Um, commanding the enemy to leave, you know, and, and understanding that nothing can stop God's plan. So if God's plan is for this person to come to know him, nothing is going to get in the way. Um, So, you know, you just pray that that path is clear and then also understand that it could take 30 years, you know, I mean, I, I do have friends that, um, I pray for too, and we've been friends for 30 years. So we don't know, you know, our timing is just not the same. It's just not on the same plane Mm -hmm. as God's. So if it takes 30 years, don't get discouraged because, you know, I, and now I'm studying, um, the book of Genesis in my Bible study group. We're doing the precept study, you know, the K. Arthur style and everything. And I really like it. And the, I mean, the things that uh, the people way back then waited for, and they waited 25, 30 years or more before the promise of something happened. So just being reminded of that, that it's not in our time and it's not in our way, you know, it it may not even happen with us. You know, Mm -hmm. I didn't talk my dad into converting. I didn't really even say anything to him. Um, God used somebody else um, Mm -hmm. and uh, spoke with my dad and everything, someone he could relate to and, and that worked. So he didn't even use me to do it really. Mm -hmm you know, but that's okay. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's, that is really great advice. And I had never thought, you know, to actually pray away the enemy and pray Mm -hmm. with the authority. I think that's really powerful advice and words of wisdom, because, um, you know, I think sometimes I question like, you know, I've been praying this for so long. Am I like, do I really want to pray this again today? Like, I just feel like I keep repeating the same thing. And I, to your other, to your second point, yes, because waiting is part Mm -hmm. of, part of the situation. God has times or in his timing is perfect. And we don't know what that is, but, but I do think there is some wisdom in praying really specific, Mm -hmm. um, powerful prayers too. Cause I do think Mm -hmm. that that does make a difference. And pray that other people are brought into that person's presence or that they'll encounter certain uh, experiences that will kind of make them think and turn them around, you know. Absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing that. I think that will really mm-hmm. help some people out there for sure. Um, and just kind of as we wrap up, do you have any like favorite verses or things that you're learning lately that you would want to share with us? Well, that um, situation, kind of, I always think of the verse in Ephesians, is it? I think I wrote it down, um, where God will do exceedingly more than we ask or pray. Um, That was played out a number of times, but especially in that example. Um, You know, I would have been happy with 
a kind of a deathbed conversion that my dad just confessed, okay, I believe I want to be saved and I want to, you know, be able to go to heaven. I would have been happy with that. I would have accepted that and praised God for it. But it was so much more. It was way beyond that. So that verse kind of, you know, is illustrated perfectly that, um, you know, God has a bigger plan than we could even imagine for ourselves that we could even want. Mm -hmm. So I love that one. And then I also love um, in, in Isaiah, I think I wrote that down too, Isaiah 30, verse 21. I'm paraphrasing it a little bit, but um, God's talking to um, the Israelites and he's saying, you know, whether you turn to the left or right, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And so mm -hmm. in my study of Genesis, you know, we're talking about how we're kind of adopted into the um, family of Abraham and into the family of the Israelites. So I'm, I'm always kind of funny when people apply these verses to themselves when they were meant for someone like Jeremiah or, you know, whatever. But, you know, I just ask that God would apply it to me. I'm an adopted, you know, family. And I would love to hear a voice behind me saying, this is the way, walk in it, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know, you know, to go to the left or the right. I'm sort of indecisive about some things. So if I could just hear his voice behind me saying, go this way, I would love that. So I just ask that it applies to me. <laughs> That's so cool. I really like that. I don't I don't know if I've heard that scripture in that way before. And so I think that's really cool to remember, like in those little moments or the big moments where we feel, like you said, very indecisive and um, crippled with like, uh, you know, paralysis, like, which way do mm -hmm. I go? I don't mm -hmm. know. That can be, that can be really stressful. And so right. just to remember that mm -hmm. God's voice is available. All we have to do is ask and then open our ears to listen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. I think this is going to really relate to some people out there and hopefully give them that extra little push of faith to keep praying, keep mm -hmm. praying specifically and powerfully and don't give up and trust that God has more, far more than we could imagine planned for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you everyone for tuning in to this week's episode. As always, you can find us at sparklefaith.com or go to our Instagram at underscore sparklefaith underscore. You can also check out our sponsors, Life Audio at lifeaudio.com or check them out at Life Audio. And you can find other podcasts just like this one. We will see you here next episode. Thank you so much for joining us.